So, I don't know why you're telling me. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, here's what we have is a sum, right? Where this has gone in our sigma notation. And if you guys remember, if I was going to give you a problem like this, uh, or any when we're talking about this, we need to understand again what sigma notation. Because what we previously did is we did something like this, but it was we had an arithmetic sequence, right? So please remember the parts of this is this is the value that you start at. This is the value that you end at. So we have a start, an end, and then this is our rule. So notice for now, last class period, we talked about rules that were uh, arithmetic sequences. Now you can see my rule is a geometric rule. Do you guys see that? It's the rule of the geometric, right? Before, we did the rule for the arithmetic. Now it's geometric. So all you're simply going to be doing is adding up these values. Now, let's say I, give you, I gave you something easy. And let's say this is 3, 1, 5n. Now, or 5n, or 5 times 0.25 raised to the n, right? Here's a geometric sequence. Now, guys, could you probably do this in your calculator for three values? Yeah. Right? It'd be pretty easy. You'd probably just plug 1, 2, and 3 in and be done with it. It's not that bad. But um, what if I gave you 30 values? Well, you're obviously not going to want to plug in 5 times 0.25, 1, plus 5 times 0.25, Two, you're not going to want to do that all the way up to 30. So there is a rule that I want you guys to write down that we are going to use for finite sequences. I'm sorry, I forgot to make sure you wrote this down. Finite sequences. OK? Finite sequences. Here is the rule for the sum. The sum of a finite sequence, when you have a start and end and a rule, is equal to a sub 1 over 1 minus r raised to the n over 1 minus r. Wow. Where r represents your rate, r represents your ratio, n represents your number of terms, and a sub 1 is going to be your initial term. So let's go ahead and work through an example on this to kind of get you guys helped out. Um, let's think of a good one. Let's do 56. So on 56 is OK. Eh, maybe I'll just keep this. I'll erase my definition stuff. So sigma 10, 1, 2. i minus 1. OK. So I could get, let's say you have a problem and it looks like this. All right? If we want to find the sum, you guys are going to have to plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and add up all those values, right? If you're going to do this manually, that's what you want to do. Or you can simply plug it into this formula. So to plug it into this formula, we need to figure out what a sub 1 is. a sub 1 is the best one to figure out. You put 1 into there. 1 minus 1 is 0. It's really nice to do it for geometric. That 0, 1 fourth raised to the 0 power is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So that one wasn't that bad. 1 minus our ratio is 1 fourth raised to the n, which is 10, all over 1 minus 4. Oh, I'm sorry, 1 minus 1 fourth. Now, I will advise you guys, I will. Um, yeah, advise you to please do not just plug into your calculator and hope for the best for decimals. Because on your final test, you are not going to have decimals. All right? It will be um, something that we're going to look through in fractions. So what I'll do is I'll rewrite 4 raised to the 10th power. OK, it's going to be a big number. So that equals 2 times. OK, 
Okay, so 4 to the 10th power is 1,048,576, correct? If you guys plug in your calculator, that's what you get, okay? You have to subtract 1 from 1 over that. So what I did is I replaced 1 as 1,048,576 over 1,048,576. That equals 1, right? The reason why I did that is because can I subtract these now that they have common denominators? Can I subtract them? Yes. Yes. So therefore, I can simplify this to 2 times 48,575. Right? Because when you subtract 1 in the numerator, that's what you get. Now, the next thing, Charles, that I do is I don't want to divide by a fraction. I want to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'll continue my work over here. <sighs> so now I have. One million forty eight thousand five hundred and seventy six times four. So now I have four million one nine four three zero four divided. I'm multiplying my numerator times four. And now I'm going to multiply my denominator times 3, because that multiplies out to 1. So I do 1,048,576 times 3. Times 2. Now obviously the 2 is in the numerator, so I multiply that by my numerator. So I do 2 times 4,194,304. And then divide that by 3,145,728. And then I do math, fraction, fraction, and I reduce down to a sum of 8 thirds. Yes, absolutely. Stop me at a spot that, I'm, that, I, that, you, that I lost you, or you just want to clarify. I want to be able to show you that it is obviously possible to go through this. Um, it, obviously, if you go ahead and plug this in, the, my only problem that I have with your step, I'm showing you this, Nathaniel, so that you understand what to do and you know how to do it. Now, would the easiest be to plug this into your calculator and then go ahead and see, you know, see what you get? Yes, obviously. The problems that I have with students is, one, they will make a very, very small mistake in the, with like their parentheses, because when you plug all this in, you're doing a lot of order of operations. So you got to be very careful with your parentheses. If you make a mistake, how are you going to know if that's right or wrong? And on the test, the other thing is when you do on the test, the test, if you take a test, it's, or like a multiple choice, it's going to be in fractional form, right? And so let's, say, or so let's say you say, all right, well, I'm not going to plug it in. I'm only going to do each thing separately, right? Well, again, if you round or you make any kind of rounding error, your fraction is going to be off. So when you go in to hit math, fraction, fraction, to go back to the fraction from a decimal, right? If you have anything off in your rounding, you might have a different fraction, OK? So I don't have a problem if you want to take the shortcut and go through it. But here's going to be your foolproof way of not making sure that there's no other errors going through that. I know it's a lot longer. I know you could do it other ways. All right, so, but I'm not here just to show you, like, hey, here's the quickest you know, way to go through it and say, hey, just plug in your calculator and then hit math fraction fraction. That wouldn't be much of a, of, that wouldn't be much of a purpose. Yes? Yeah. Hit second math. <laughs> 